Okay, if you saw my first video, that was about how to stream from Microsoft to your phone directly. This video is going to be about how you can set up your own streaming system using your Xbox as the source and your Android or tablet as a device you play on. And I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. But for now, here's uh, somebody you might remember. Seems like old times. Ready to get back to work? I thought you'd never ask. So what's going on with all the changes? Right now, you can stream to your desktop and your laptop through the Xbox Companion app. What they're adding is be able to stream to a mobile device as well. Just like DVD movies have gone the way of the dinosaur and you now stream them through Netflix or whatever uh, service you use. The same thing is happening for gaming. You're no longer going to buy games in a, a box. You're just going to stream them from wherever. And that's what Microsoft's trying to do. But Microsoft recognizes that they have a bunch of people out there with consoles. So they want you to be able to transition. Think of it as a hybrid car. We can't all go electric right away. We have to get there. We need a way to do both. Hence, Microsoft Streaming. Now, the main difference between the last demo about streaming from Microsoft and streaming from your console is that you have to upgrade your console. The console needs to be currently on the Insider's Edition of the operating system as streaming is not supported yet. If you're viewing this much later, streaming is already built in. But if it's already been released to the general public and all the Xboxes have been updated with the new streaming capabilities, uh, you can skip. Just download the app. I covered that around minute four. And then skip to minute 10, which is the actual uh, configuration of the streaming. Uh, but you don't need to upgrade your console. Well, on their Insider site, they show you that if you have a controller that's designed, one that came with the S or the X is designed with the button on the faceplate, you're good to go. Earlier controllers, not. Now, if you need a controller that's compatible, you can go over here uh, to Amazon or anywhere. Uh, I'll have a link to this in the description of the video where you can see the different controllers that are available. Uh, there's one down here is just a basic one. You can spend a lot of money on a controller. Uh, you can, uh, there's a whole Elite for 179, but here's a, a regular controller black, much like the one that comes with your Xbox One. So as the date of this video, you have to actually go to uh, Xbox Insiders and or InsiderXbox.com to sign up for the uh, trial version. But if you're watching this when it's in public release, you don't need to have the Insider Hub. Uh, you can just need the uh, app. Now, the whole purpose of this whole preview is not for you to get to games early. It's for them to get feedback. So they're going to assign you quests. They're going to say, hey, uh, do this quest or try this feature and report back. Now, there'll be a lot of people that don't do any of the quests or the surveys and all that. Uh, and I guess that's okay. But if you're going to use the service, uh, go ahead and uh, try to give them some information to make it better for all of us. Okay, here's the app for game streaming on the uh, Google Play Store. Uh, and it'll be available for everybody. But if you can download it right now, uh, but you won't be able to use it unless you have a approved sign-in. But there should be no reason why you can't install it now. As a matter of fact, go ahead and apply to be on Insiders and then download this app. Okay, we've got the app and we've got an Xbox controller. And to pair it, there's a Bluetooth button right here at the very top. This is what you have to press in order to pair it with your phone. So you can do that manually, but here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to launch the app, and the app actually will detect whether or not you have a compatible controller installed. So you see here there's Gears 5, so I'm going to click on that, and then it presents me the screen to play it. and say play. It says, oh, we didn't find a controller. So let's click on Bluetooth settings, and it'll take you directly to your Bluetooth settings here on your phone. And you go in here and you have to uh, it'll automatically start a scan, actually. So once it scans and you press that button we talked about, uh, then we'll see the actual connect. Now, depending upon your network and a few other things, it may take a bit. I have to do it twice to get it to come up. So I'm pressing the controller again. The Bluetooth screen is still in the scan mode, so it's looking for devices. And eventually, though, uh, what happens is, boom, there's the controller. All you have to do is uh, tap on that controller, 
and it says pairing and in a couple seconds we have a controller Now this part is needed if you're watching the video in uh, around November, the time this video has been released, where the new version of the Xbox operating system uh, hasn't been released yet. So you need to go get that. So you you get on the Insiders app, you apply. Uh, eventually you'll get to this part where you can go in here and say, update my Xbox to the preview OS version. So remember now, you're going to be on a developing version that's going to have bugs perhaps. So if you're a solid gamer and you don't want to be interrupted, uh, you may want to think twice about this. So sometime after you join the program, it's going to set up your Xbox for updating. So you just click on Start Updating, and this takes quite a bit of time. It's just like a regular full console update when you come up with a new revision, except you're getting the preview version. I've cut this down quite a bit as far as the time it takes. You'll see several screens as far as status goes, and you have to let it go to the end. Don't shut off your Xbox. Uh, hopefully no power outages. But let it go all the way to the end. Your system will do a final reboot, and uh, you'll see this. You'll see a new screen. And it's going to uh, log you in. Well, you may have to reconfigure some stuff but and log in. Press X here to log in, and you should be good to go. You should see a quick enhanced error reporting is on where you have to agree and say continue because they're going to collect more data from you to help them understand how things are working. So now that the system is upgraded, you're not done yet. Now you have to test your console for streaming because it has to pass a couple tests to make sure you're configured correctly. One of the first things you have to do is go into your set Xbox settings and set up streaming. Turn it on. So we go over to home. And go up here to not chats, but get over here to oops, they go here down to settings, and you'll see that there's a th entry called console streaming. You click on that, and you have to check the box to make sure if it's already checked, fine. Then, after that, you have to click on the test console streaming so that it'll make sure that it's configured correctly. So, we go down to devices, and we say accessories, and it says here the Xbox controller. Now, although this says no updates available, you're probably going to see one that says you require an update to the firmware on your controller. I uh, just didn't have a screenshot of that. So what you have to do is go ahead and do that. So once you've let the uh, controller firmware update, uh, you're good to go on that. But notice here that there's a controller firmware. Until there are new updates, some buttons may not work as anticipated. So another warning, just like your OS is experimental, your controller firmware is not a finalized version and may affect your gameplay in other games. The other thing you notice here on the end of this test, it says console settings, power energy savings mode. Your mode, you have to be on always on, not on power savings. And that just means that if you're on a uh, phone and you want to start your Xbox up without having to go press your button, you can do it remotely. It uh, should be set up uh, that way. So you simply go back into your Xbox settings and you find uh, the power settings, which are located under power and startup for all places. Uh, go down to there. There we go. And then got there you have your power mode and startup. And you say power mode instead of energy settings. You put it to instant on and you're ready to go. Now, the truth be told, you only need this set if you're not going to be there at the house and you want to, or don't want to walk downstairs wherever your Xbox is and manually turn it on. It allows your app on your phone to remotely start your Xbox. You don't necessarily have to do this, but here's the last setup, uh, and you should see everything's good to go. Of course, again, the warning with the uh, controller, but after it's all done with the test, uh, you should see this. Everything's good, all green check marks, and time to play. So you go to your phone and you launch that streaming app you got from the Google Play Store. Uh, right now it says preview, but if it's, you're reviewing this later uh, and it's been released to the general public, it won't say that. It should be somewhat similar to this. And it goes through this setting up your system, just checking everything's okay. And look what I see. It's my 
Xbox welcome screen. So just like a PC, like in my office, if I wanted to play some Xbox, I didn't have to go downstairs. I would simply stream using the Xbox companion app. And this streaming app is the Android equivalent of that. So I go over here, I find something to play. And I thought, what better to use than Halo? So choose your favorite game that you want to play and uh, launch it. And you'll get a screen probably something like this as it's getting your game ready for streaming. But then you'll see this. You see the Halo screen. Now these are screen captures off of my phone that I streamed back to a capture device. But this is operating on my Android phone. And amazingly enough, it looks like this. And if you don't have your controller set up, you may have to go back in there and uh, set that up to your Android. Don't worry about it. Uh, as long as you set it up before and you're paired and you're operating, you should be fine. So it's time to play some uh, Halo. And just like in a regular uh, desktop, or excuse me, Xbox version of it, uh, it'll do the normal stuff. For example, it'll sync your data with the cloud so everything's cool. Bring in your information uh, to do that. And here we are at the Halo main menu. So uh, it'll pick up right where you left off. Uh, on my mind, I'm starting over because I had completed it, I believe. It's been a few months. Uh, so I'm going to go to Halo 4 here and do a quick start. And we're going to start from scratch, basically. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this screen here is a capture of me. I'm streaming to my desktop from my phone screen while I'm streaming from my Xbox. I hope that's understandable. Uh, so now... I've switched back to an external camera showing the actual phone. It's a little dark and it could become blurry here, but you'll see uh, it's loading up the game, doing everything it's supposed to do, just like it was on your Xbox, and you start entering into cutscenes when you start a new uh, Xbox. So here we are uh, watching some uh, cutscenes fly by. Looks very nice. Looks really nice in person. So if you remember, uh, cutscenes uh, were pretty long, so I'm skipping through some of these. By the way, another thing to remember is that you're playing on a phone that is more powerful than the Xbox that Halo was released to operate on. And But you're really not operating on it, you're just streaming. But the point being is that our hardware nowadays is amazing, now, so we can do this kind of stuff. So let me uh, move around here, start the campaign up, and let me skip to one more cutscene. And for those that... Uh, I played Halo before, Halo 4. Uh, you'll recognize all of this stuff. And by the way, it doesn't matter what version of Halo, what you don't have to worry about compatibility. You're streaming from your Xbox. As long as the game operates on your Xbox, it'll stream to your console, to your Android phone. Uh, so just watch this unfold here. Now you may be asking, what about sound? Well, two things. In my earlier video, I explained how you could have earbuds so you don't disturb other people in the house. But in this particular case, I did this very early in the morning while I had Do Not Disturb uh, on so that I was not going to hear any sound. Uh, so I had to go back in and change my settings to do that. Seems like old times. Ready to get back to work? I thought you'd never ask. We've got intrusion alerts lighting up on multiple decks. Now, what you're going to see here is the screens are pretty responsive. Everything working pretty well. Oh, by the way, you're getting a little glare from the sun on uh, while during this recording. The screens themselves are very clear on your uh, Android device. Uh, no uh, shadows. The blurring as well could be a little bit of my recording software working. Uh, but the point being is that it's basically a miniature Xbox. So if you're sitting at home uh, streaming there, uh, you can be able in some other room and have a 5G connection uh, and you get no interruption. Uh, it looks pretty stable. Now the main difference of this versus the earlier version which streams from Microsoft servers is that you have to be on the same local network to stream from your Xbox. You can't do it from 100 miles away or 5 miles away. So there you have it, how to get your Xbox One X uh, set up to stream in your house right from your console to, to your mobile device. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want to get more, just subscribe to Old Guy Geek. You can also follow me at Facebook or Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.